How do we food? A beginner's guide to nutrition. No need to keep reading articles and blogs about nutrition and getting confused about all the science behind food. This video is your go-to lexicon for understanding the principles of nutrition. So when it comes to food, you'll get a bit smarter uh 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 So I've heard of calories, but what the hell are they? And why do they want to be in my body so bad? Calories, or strictly speaking, kilocalories, are a measurement tool used to determine how much energy can be found in the food we eat. This energy is delivered to our bodies by three macronutrients, carbohydrates, protein, and fat. A gram of carbs and a gram of protein both yield four calories, while a gram of fat yields nine. Yeah, fat is definitely the show-off of these three, so what happens to that energy once it's been delivered to our bodies? One option is to store this energy in the form of body mass. The other option is to burn the calories by using up this energy. For example, by taking a walk or going to the gym or making a run for it when you see a colleague in the supermarket. How many calories do I need to jam inside my body? The number of calories you need in a day depends on three factors. First, there's the basic bitch of these three factors. The amount of energy you need to keep your body functioning when it is at a complete rest. This is called the basal metabolic rate, or BMR. This is the energy you need for basic life-sustaining functions such as breathing, the beating of your heart, and the regulation of your body temperature. It's basically the energy you need for lying at your couch all Saturday afternoon staring at your phone. Which is a valid lifestyle. We're not judging. Secondly, we have the Thermic Effect Food, or TEF. This is the energy required for disposal, digestion, and absorption of the food you ate. So yes, you basically burn calories whilst eating. It's the best excuse for eating a whole bag of chips in one sitting that we've ever heard. Gotta burn them calories! Lastly, the activities of daily living, ADL, are all about the calories needed to energize you for your day-to-day -day activities. This strongly depends on your lifestyle and physical activities. As you'd probably understand, professional mountain climbers require more energy than professional mattress testers. So how are these calories delivered inside my body again? By macaroni with Nutella? Close, by macronutrients. As briefly pointed out before, macronutrients are the main energy deliverers in our diet. They're like meal delivery bike couriers for energy. We need loads and loads of them, hence macro. As we said before, there's three types, carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. They should be responsible for respectively 40 to 70%, 10 to 35%, and 20 to 40% of the calories in your diet. We can't get any more specific than that because the exact amounts are strongly dependent on your lifestyle and your goals. We don't know your life. So, how many calories should you eat when you want to maintain, lose, or gain weight? Looking at the amount of energy you take in can help you achieve your goals. When you want to maintain your weight, you want to take in the same amount of energy as the calories you burn. Losing weight can be achieved by burning more calories than you consume. And gaining weight? Well, you better take a cab to the pie store instead of biking all the way there. Carbohydrates are the most important energy carriers in nutrition and are composed of the elements of carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen. These might sound like the ingredients of a bomb in a Tom Cruise movie, but they are elements found in a wide spectrum of food products, both healthy and unhealthy. When carbs enter your body, they're all broken down to glucose, which provides the direct energy your body needs to function properly. More specifically, Glucose is the only energy source for your red blood cells, your brain, and your nerve cells. Now, you better be putting glucose on your Christmas card list because she's been a very good friend to you. When we talk about carbohydrates, it's the quality that matters. An adequate intake is more focused on eating food with complex, slow-releasing carbs with a slow effect on your blood glucose level, like vegetables and nuts rather than food with the short and easy carbs that can lead to spikes. Like, and don't act surprised now, candy. Honorable mention, fiber. Although fiber might sound like a macronutrient on its own, it's actually also a carb. 
Except, it's a carb that can't be broken down to glucose molecules by your body. Instead, fiber contributes to a feeling of satiation after eating, a reduced risk of heart and vascular disease, and a well-functioning digestion. That's science for makes your poop real good. Here's our second macronutrient star, protein. Proteins are essential for a healthy diet, and basically the queen of all nutrients. Protein is the foundation of all cells, the heart of all organic activity, and indispensable for the maintenance of muscle structures and production of hormones and enzymes. While proteins are mostly known for being useful for your muscles, they also contribute to your skin, hair, and bones. We all want to be pretty little skeletons after we die, right? Proteins are made from free building blocks called amino acids. After your body has broken down the protein into blocks, and they all fall down like Jenga blocks, they are built up again in the specific areas where your body needs it at that moment. There are nine amino acids, known as the essential amino acids, that can only be obtained from our diets. Animal protein is the most complete source. It contains all essential amino acids. Plant-based protein often lacks one or more essential amino acids, but by combining incomplete proteins, a complete protein intake can be established. Pairing rice and beans is the most common way to do so. This combo provides you with all essential amino acids. As an exception to the rule, soy protein does contain all the essential amino acids. Which explains why soy is like the prom king of the non-animal eating crowd. Fats. Our third energy delivery guy is fat. No, 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 we're not fat shaming anybody here. It's just what he's called, fat. Fat is important because he's delivering essential fatty acids that your muscles need to work properly. Fat also makes our brain do the good working good. We can divide fats into three groups. Unsaturated fats, saturated fats, and trans fatty acids. Or more suitably, the good, the bad, and the ugly. The most relevant differences between these guys is the overall impact that they have on our health. Unsaturated fats are known for being healthy. They have double bonds, which make them liquid at room temperature. They're good for the brain, which is why you always fantasize about avocados whilst doing a Sudoku. Then there's the saturated fats, which lack double bonds and are less healthy. Reducing saturated fat intake is linked to a decreased risk in heart disease. Nevertheless, some kinds of saturated fats might be healthy. They're called MCTs. But the judge is still out on that one. The verdict for trans fatty acids is in though. These dudes aren't terrible. Due to regulation, these types of fats are becoming less and less present. Which is good, because our bodies do not know what to do with these. It's like, who let these fatty acids in here? Hello, we're trying to digest here. The existence of macronutrients implies the existence of micronutrients. Am I right about this? Hmm, I can tell those unsaturated fats are doing their job, because your brain is doing excellent work here. The legends are true. Micronutrients do exist. You've probably heard of these guys. They're minerals and vitamins. The things you kept hearing about when you were denied candy as a child. Childhood trauma aside, they're pretty great. Vitamins facilitate the release of energy from macronutrients. Beside that, every vitamin has its own special role to play when it comes to numerous activities throughout the body. And minerals are just as important to consume in adequate amounts as vitamins. They influence fluid balance and are necessary for building structures such as bones and teeth. I mean, if the zombie apocalypse breaks out and you get turned into a brain-eating monster and half your face falls off, well, you'll want your jawbone to look amazing, right? Minerals help you with that. In contrast to macronutrients, micronutrients do not provide energy and should be consumed in smaller amounts. Which does not make them any less important. Stop saying that! You're hurting their feelings! While they've been so good to you! Please respect all good nutrients, be they macro or micro.